He's a young guy who has an electric arm. There's some serious upside there, and you never know what he can do. When the Texas Rangers selected Dylan Tate fourth overall in the 2015 MLB draft, they envisioned him anchoring a future starting rotation. When he entered his first full minor league season in 2016, he was ranked the 36th best prospect in all of baseball by MLB.com. But in a span of four months, Dylan Tate went from one of the best pitching prospects in baseball and an untouchable asset to traded. Surprisingly, headlining a deal to bring impending free agent Carlos Beltran to the Lone Star State. What happened? Being exposed to some new things mechanically and those things didn't work for me. But I gave him an honest try and uh, you just keep going with it and you just keep battling through the good and the bad. After an up and down summer, Tate packed his bags and joined the Yankees organization. He was sent to Charleston to finish out the season and hopefully find out what led to his early season struggles. It was just seven appearances in South Carolina, but he felt as though something clicked. I was just working on getting a feel for doing what it is that I've done in the past and picking up those pieces. And I was able to do that in a few stints and sometimes not, but over time, it slowly started to get better and show signs of improvement. So I'm just continuing where I left off. His debut with the Yankees flashed why he was arguably the top pitching prospect in the 2015 draft. He features an exciting fastball slider combination with an improving changeup. It's easy to see why the team eyed him in a deal for Beltron. I'm just throwing fastball sliders and changeups. And my philosophy when I go up there, when I do best, is to try to punch everybody out. And that doesn't necessarily mean I'm punching everybody out, but that focus that I have when I have that mentality makes me execute my pitches a lot better. After the regular season concluded, Tate was sent to the Arizona Fall League to continue the adjustments and developments he made while in Charleston. Working on just being more consistent with my fastball, it, it moves at times to the arm side, so I'm trying to figure out when it's going to do that, and that's been the toughest pitch for me to really feel so far but I, I'm thinking I'm moving in the right direction with it a little bit and trying to figure out why it's doing what it's doing but uh, as far as the other pitches go the the slider and the changeup, I've gotten better feel for my slider which has um, been exciting to see that again and uh, the changeup is still coming along. That slider is going to be a pitch that's really going to carry him uh, it's limiting the amount of times he works around that ball and spins it over the plate. You know, we, we want to keep that good, quick shape to it. Um, and just getting him to use all his pitches, too. It's getting him to understand that they might fail and take a couple steps back here, but in the long run, hopefully in the Bronx soon, that it's going to pay off. That's, that's the selling point there. So uh, just getting him to trust the whole pitch package when he needs it. The results in the hitter-friendly fall league aren't as crucial for Tate as he prepares for 2017. The 22-year-old has some of the highest upside in the Yankees minor league system. After a summer of diminished stuff on the mound, his velocity and the quality of his secondary pitches returned in Charleston and Arizona, offering hope for his long-term potential. When he arrives in Tampa for spring training, Tate will hopefully have found what works for him on the mound and will look to prove to everyone that he's the same pitcher that was taken fourth overall. You can see more Yankees on demand and Yankee scoreboard content by clicking here. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right there.